So we kind of like to dabble with electronic music in the studio. I find that it's really nice to be able to like make my own audio for, for videos without having to attribute it to anybody or to pay for music. So it's kind of cool. I've got these uh, Korg uh, digital synthesizers, which are pretty neat. Um, each module does something different and then they can all kind of connect in with each other. So I have a sampler, um, I've got bass, I've got keys. Um, so it's, it's actually pretty cool. Um, but one of the problems is they use an absolute ton of batteries. Uh, you can kind of look at one of these things. It's six double A's per unit. So total I'm using 24 double A's and they don't last super long. So the first thing that I did was I built this octopus cable. So I got a real beefy wall unit and then I built this cable by soldering all these connectors in parallel. It's actually kind of a funky size, so it took me a little bit to find. So what's really cool, I can show you, is I can plug each of these into the units and then now I don't have to rely on batteries, which is really nice because that, that's like a win right there. So you can kind of turn each of these units on. And then. And then you can kind of go in and change all the knobs. And, so it's pretty cool. So. Aside from batteries, there's another really big problem with these things. They're, they're really a cool size, but to do any like really good songs, you need all of the units, all of the pieces. So if I'm like walking around the house and I'm trying to transport this, I'm now carrying all of these modules and they're not, they're not super cheap. So, you know, it's just kind of dangerous to be carrying them like this, but I'm kind of carrying them all around or I'm going to take them to work and use them at lunchtime. And it's just kind of cumbersome. Then you got to find places on your desk for them and it's kind of a pain in the neck. So, um, I was kind of going online looking for solutions. Uh, there was a guy named Oliver Dowie, um, came up with a, um, a profile for a stand that I, that I thought was pretty cool. So what he did was he took two of these side by side, and this is part of a stand, and then it would go up at an angle, and then it will hold um, two additional units. So you end up with four whole units. So I thought that was really cool. Um, I kind of believe if it's not broken, don't fix it. So I took the profile from his open source project um, and didn't really change it at all. Um, but then I kind of made some design changes um, kind of on how mine was going to be set up. Um, I think it's really cool to kind of pay homage to that uh, 60s and 70s kind of wood looking synthesizer look. Um, so I'm going to build a unit that now holds all four of these in one giant box so then I can kind of connect them all together and then it's going to work in my power adapter so now I have a unit that uses no batteries it's one giant box that I can just kind of take and then I can set it wherever I'm working and I don't have to worry about these things all individually and then I'm going to try really hard to make the whole thing kind of pay homage to that uh, 60s and 70s synth look so that's what this video is about. We're gonna run some parts on the CNC, we're gonna do some 3D printing parts, and we're just gonna get out on the table saw, and we're gonna put this thing together and see what it looks like. So uh, let's go build this thing. were to create a structure that I could put all these individual models and four of them 
and kind of hold them all together so it wasn't so cumbersome to carry them around and it was easier to kind of use them. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do was find a way to power them all via the wall so that I wasn't going through tons and tons of batteries. So these things take six batteries a piece, which is a big, a big pain. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do was create a look that was kind of like a 60s, 70s, like signature synthesizer look. Uh, so this is what I did to kind of try to accomplish all those goals. I used these side panels from an open source project that, that somebody else did. I really like the angle that they chose to uh, place these all in it. It's really ergonomic when you're working on it. And it lets me do a loose fit here so that these aren't like really rigidly in the structure. They're just kind of sitting there. So unless you dump this thing over, it's not gonna be a problem. So at the same time, because of that loose fit, it's really nice that I can take a module out and I can go off and do something or I can put a different module in. You just disconnect this barrel connector pull it right out, you know, do whatever you want. And then when you're done, you just come back in, stick it in there, give it power, turn it right back on. I modified this, um, this custom harness a little bit. Instead of having it separate, I decided to work it into the structure. So it's been soldered to, uh, to be able to follow this, uh, this beam and then just kind of fan out to all the, you know, areas where it needs to provide power. And I had to, Put it in through the middle. Uh, in a perfect world, I would have power come out on this side and on this side. But because of all the power ports on the upper left-hand side, that means the middle units all come out right here. So the best situation I could figure out was to drill a hole through this really thin beam in the middle. And one of the things that that turned out really cool, I think, is when I drilled that hole. You know, plywood is a is a great material but it, it tends to kind of flake and it's really easy to chip because of how it's constructed. So a hole like that is difficult to drill and it's not the absolute cleanest. So I just designed a little 3D printed part here that uh, would kind of go over it and had a big flange so it kind of disguised the hole. And it also gave me a little bit of color here and allowed my wires to come through. So, as far as the 60s and 70s looks concerned, I chose a half inch plywood. Um, it's a pine based plywood. I like it because I, I, I really, really feel like it's like quintessentially uh, 60s and 70s uh, kind of look. Um, it was just kind of built, it's, really, it's one of my absolute favorite materials, but it was built uh, with a table saw, the CNC, and then I, uh, I wanted to add some logos. Um, a lot of the early synthesizers had like screen printed logos on the front and on the back. Uh, I did it a little bit differently. I put this in my laser cutter and kind of debossed the cord logos. I've got a big one here and a big one here, but it's kind of like a little nice tactile feel. So when I got the whole thing together, I um, I just covered it in a uh, like a gloss um, coating. And I wanted to do one thing that was maybe a little more modern and would give more color to the unit. So I designed and 3D printed these washers that the screws would go in and it does two things I feel like it gives color to the side of the unit so you can like change the colors if you want if you want to give it a different look it makes it look a little more modern and then at the same time it makes the screws a little less of an afterthought a little more like they're supposed to be there uh, so that was pretty cool um, all in all I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty happy with the unit I think it does exactly um, what I wanted it to do and it makes uh, using these units like, a lot a lot easier so there we go, we can sit there and uh, make some music. Thanks for checking it out.